Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. My name is Perry. I'm a 15 year veteran in the nightclub and festival security industry. Here at Bowser Tips, my mission is to teach you the best practices, help you gain insight, and pass along a little bit of the knowledge that I've gained throughout the years. On today's video, we're going to talk about the five biggest misconceptions about being a nightclub bouncer. Coming up. Here at Bouncer Tips, we also talk about tips and tricks to help improve the nightclub security and festival security industry. We also do product reviews of the items and tools that we use to make our jobs better. Then I'll take you behind the ropes so we can build a community where we can talk about the best practices, help generate ideas, and overall help you become more successful in the nightclub and festival security industry. Our goal is to help you become a better bouncer, increase your value in the industry, and help keep you and your guests safe. I've created this video to shed a little bit of light on some of the biggest misconceptions about being a nightclub bouncer. Misconception number one is actually being called a bouncer. A lot of people that work in the nightclub and festival industry don't like the word bouncer. The word bouncer has a negative connotation in the nightclub and festival industry as somebody that is going to physically throw you out of the establishment. That's just not the case anymore. Back in the old days, that term, bouncer, was used as a way to describe somebody that physically removes somebody from the establishment when they're being out of control, when they're fighting and being unruly, and it typically meant they did it very violently. In the current environment, most people prefer the term doorman, security personnel, or customer service representative to describe the job that we do as we really do try to be hands-off and work through situations rather than just getting physical right off the bat. We do understand that the bouncing word is going to be continued to be used because it's in the lexicon. I equate it to the way people used to talk about copy machines as Xerox or possibly a hot tub as a jacuzzi, similar things like that. The word bouncer is just going to continue to be used and to be quite honest, I'm okay with it so much so that I've embraced it to be the title of my channel. The second biggest misconception about bouncers is that they are huge mountain of men, big muscle bound brutes that just want to throw their weight around. In fact, some of the best bouncers that I've worked in the industry are not big, huge muscle bound brutes. Most of them are average sized people with the ability to communicate effectively and help resolve problems. That's what makes the best bouncer. I don't care how big you are, how strong you are. In fact, most of the time, some of the most effective bouncers out there are not really big guys at all. But they're smart, and they know how to communicate with guests, and they know how to resolve a problem. And really, that's the most important key to becoming a bouncer. Your size really doesn't matter. You do have to be able to defend yourself and take care of a situation if it escalates beyond the communication part. But you do not have to be a muscle-bound brute or a mountain of a man. In fact, you don't even need to be a man. I've worked with some female bouncers that were just incredible at their job and done a nice job of dealing with customers. And they're a little bit better, to be quite honest, at dialing down somebody's anger. The third biggest misconception is that bouncers love to fight. While it's true, periodically we are involved in altercations. If you love to fight, this isn't really the job for you. You see, if your first instinct is to fight, chances are you're not going to be able to control the situation. To be quite honest, I hate fighting. And the reason I hate fighting is because if you've ever been in a fight, you never know what can happen. You've got people that are different levels, different training levels out there, and things can happen at any time, and you can really get yourself hurt. So if you want to get into a fight, and you want that energy of being in a fight, the bouncing game is not for you. Most of the bouncers that I've worked with over the years try to do whatever they can to avoid getting in a physical altercation with a guest. Now, sometimes there's situations where a guest just won't cooperate given our best effort to try to settle the situation or resolve the situation without getting physical. But there are times where you do have to defend yourself because a guest is becoming unruly and is putting your safety at risk. I personally hate those situations because the best technique is to destabilize the individual and put them down on the ground. But unfortunately, typically that means that you must go down with them to protect them so that you don't hurt them or hurt yourself. And that's where you get scrapes, bruises, bumps, and it really isn't the best thing to do. And 
I don't know if you've ever been on concrete, because most parking lots are concrete, that can hurt. So if you can avoid that at all costs, that's the proper thing to do. The fourth biggest misconception are that nightclub bouncers are uneducated buffoons. That's just not the case. Most of the people that work in the industry that I've worked with are college students or people that are trying to put themselves through college. So they are educated. A lot of them are working on degrees in criminal justice, as well as our former military people that have gone through quite a bit of training in different fields prior to becoming a nightclub bouncer. So if you think that they're not able to think their way out of a situation, that's just not true. And when I'm looking to hire somebody in the industry, I'm looking for somebody with the highest level of intelligence to make sure that I've got somebody that can handle situations. A lot of the guys I hire have the desire to become police officers or serve in the military, all different types of avenues, and they have to be smart guys to move forward in those professions. If you like the content that you've seen so far, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that little bell for future notifications of when new topics come out. And if you like this video, please make sure you crush that like button. The fifth biggest misconception is that you need to be some sort of gifted martial artist to do this job. That's just not the case. Like I said, most of the time you will not have to get physically involved with an altercation. However, you do have to be able to handle yourself. Now what I find is that people that have a wrestling background or MMA experience do tend to have a little bit more experience in a confrontational situation. So it is to their advantage to have a little bit of training, but a good manager, a good head of security, should be able to teach you some fundamental tips and tricks to help you handle a situation should it get a little bit more aggressive than what you'd like. As a bonus misconception, I'll throw out the myth that was created by comedian Ron White that bouncers have an unnatural affinity for the movie Roadhouse. That's just not true. So if you know what I'm talking about, don't believe it. Now if you hit the subscribe button, you'll see that I'll actually review the movie Roadhouse in the near future. There are a lot of great moments and some teaching tools that you can use in that movie. And those were my five biggest misconceptions about being a night cub bouncer. If you think you'll like the content of this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for following me today. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and you've just been taken beyond the ropes.